this message that I'm about to speak to us, it just came to me the other day. Can you imagine how God operates? Because I was waiting to hear what God wants me to speak to us this morning. So the message landed on me on Friday evening when I was, doing, when I was polishing my shoes, preparing to go to work. The message landed in my heart. And I told God, what do you want me to speak concerning this message? I didn't have a word. So he woke me up on Saturday. Na sijazwa kurauka hiyo Saturday. Saturday na mukanga around six. Nilijipata ni miamuka four. It disturbed me. God had laid that message. And he made sure that I, I was able to wake up hiyo masa. Na nikanda kwandi? Kwandika. God had loaded the message in my spirit. So I just found myself writing. Niliandika karibu pages mbili. And I told God, do you want me to speak all these things? And he contested it to a portion where I'll be speaking to us this morning. So I'll be reading for us the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 53. The same Isaiah we have, we have, we have read. That time in Akimbianga sa zingine hatu na shindo. Itanitosh, but I know the grace, the grace of God is sufficient. Amen. So the book of Isaiah probably chapter fifty three from verse one. Maybe if the media can project for us Isaiah chapter fifty three verse one. It says, Who has believed? our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed. Amen? So that's the word that God laid in my heart. Can you come up again, verse 1? Just stick to verse 1. That who has believed our report. And when God laid that word into my heart, I told God, what do you want me to speak about this word? He told me, Elvis, whose word will you believe? So my message this morning is, whose word will you believe? There are so many words we have heard. There are so many things people have been speaking to us in our lives, in our nation, in our families. But God challenged me on this because I was disturbed. Lately, I've been disturbed by what has been happening in our country, especially with regards to the taxes. So when God laid that and he told me, Elvis, whose word will you believe? And that is the word I want to share with us this morning, that whose word will you believe? Will we believe the words that you have been hearing outside there, or will we believe the word of God? Amen? So that now takes me to the main verse that I want us to read this morning. The main verse, we can read it from the book of Numbers, chapter 13. It's a long, uh, it, it has 25 verses, but we'll skip a bit. So we'll be delving more on the book of Numbers, chapter 13. So media kindly open for us the book of Numbers, chapter 13. So just to, to, to give us uh, an overview of the book of Numbers, it talks about the 12 men who were sent to spy the land of Canaan. And there were 12 because each man represented a tribe. So for all the, the 12 tribes were represented by 12 men. But there are two men who stood out. And those two men are the ones that we'll be focusing on. So media kindly, the book of Numbers 13, Verse 1, just to start us off, it says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers you shall send a man, every one a leader among them. So Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran, according to the command of the Lord. All of the men who were heads of the children of Israel, verse 4, now these were their names from the tribe of Reuben, Shamua, the son of Zaka. From the tribe of Simon, Shaphat, the son of Hori. From the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of Jephune. From the tribe of Issachar, Egal, the son of Joseph. From the tribe of Ephraim, Hoshea, the son of Nun. So Hoshea is also called Joshua. From the tribe of Benjamin, Palti, the son of Raphi. From the tribe of Zebulun, Gadiel, the son of Sodi. From the tribe of Joseph, that is from the tribe of Manasseh, Gadi, the son of Susi. From the tribe of Dan, Amiel, the son of Gemali. 
from the tribe of Asher, Setha, the son of Michael. Verse 14, from the tribe of Naphtali, Nafbi, the son of Wolf, Wolf Ayoad. From the tribe of God, Guel, the son of Machi. These are the names of the men whom Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Hoshea, the son of Nun, Joshua. So you see the 12 tribe that was sent to spy the land of Canaan. The purpose was to go and survey and to see if they could enter the land. Amen? So you realize that all the 12 tribes, each and every tribe had their own information. They had their own message. But there are two men who stood out. That is Joshua and Caleb. Amen? So let's just go deeper. Verse, where did we reach verse? Verse? Yes, 16. These are the names of the men whom Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Hoshea, the son of Nun, Joshua. Verse 17. Then Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, Go up this way into the south and go up to the mountains. Verse 18. And see what the land is like, whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many, whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether these cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds whether the land is rich or poor, and whether there are forests there or not. Be of good courage and bring some of the fruit of the land. Now the time was, this, was the season of the first ripe grapes. So they went up and spied out the land from the wilderness of Zin as far as Rehob, near the entrance of Hamath. And they went up through the south and came to Hebron, Ahiman, Sheshai, and Talmai, the descendants of Anaka, were there. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. Then they came to the valley of Echol and there cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes. They cut it in between two of them on a pole. They also brought some of the pomegranates and figs. The place was called the valley of Echol because of the cluster which the men of Israel cut down there. And they returned from spying out the land after 40 days. Amen. So realize that when they went the, the message was very simple. They were supposed to bring the information, what they saw, if the land can be inhabited. Amen? So they went. So you realize that everyone had their own view of the place. It's like many of us in our country today, we have so many views of what is happening in our nation. Amen? So we can choose to be negative. We can choose to be positive. It is upon you. Amen? So you can choose how is the economy affecting us individually? How is the economy affecting you as a personally? How is it affecting you? You can choose to say that uchumi ni mbaya. You can choose to say that we, we are suffering. But I want us to shift because this is what God told me when, I, when he gave me this message that we don't need to believe what people are saying. We don't need to see things the way people are seeing them. Because how God sees things in the book of Matthew chapter one, the book of Luke chapter one verse thirty-seven, it says that with man things look impossible, but with God all things are possible. So tonight, even as I reflect on the message that was shared to us when we, we had a, an in gathering at Shiloh, speaking the language of God. So this morning I want to, I want to challenge us to see things with God's perspective. And to hear God's report, not the world report. Even though Anasamanga kwa ground vitu ni different, but let us choose to listen and to hear the voice of God. Amen? So there were 12 men who were sent to spy the land. Each man was representing a particular tribe in the 12 tribes of Israel, out of which only two men were able to give a positive report. So this morning I'm challenging us to have a positive report in spite of what is happening. We know for sure that fuel prices the other day they were increased, more so the kerosene with 33 shillings. And Mutan is a sema ni kuba si kubaya. Let us choose to believe that with God we are not operating in the economy of this country. We are operating in the economy of God. So in the economy of God there is no limitation. In the economy of God, there is, no, there is no struggling. You cannot serve God and struggle. 
When you look at the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, it says that, and God shall supply all our needs, not some, all, according to what? To his riches in glory. So when you put your trust in God, you will not see the situations that are happening around us. Amen? Like for me, nimezea kulipa miyamoja kila siku nikienda kazini. And I know God has been supplying it. Nikitisho yo fair, naona tu nikama kiti ya kawaida. Amen? Because I know I'm not operating in the economy of this world. I'm operating in the economy of God. Because he's the one, the Bible says he's the one who gives what? Seed to the soul. So when you choose to believe in God's report, you are seeing things in the perspective of God. The same way the two men, Joshua and Caleb, they saw things in the perspective of God. So this morning I'm challenging us to see things in God's perspective. When we give, we don't give. I normally tell even my class, I teach in the discipleship class, that when you give, you don't give because you have. You give to honor God. Our giving is part of worship. It's part of honoring who? God. So not everyone that gives in this place, they have. They don't have. They are honoring God because he's the one who gave. Who gave. So when you choose to operate in God's perspective, then we see things in the way God sees them. We see things in God's perspective. We are not seeing things happening around us the way people are seeing it. Me, I've not been seeing things the way they are operating. I've, I've been seeing things in God's perspective. And God has been faithful. He has continuously supplied. I've never lacked. I've never slept angry. The other day, I was able to go home and visit my parents in Kisumu. I come from Kisumu, Kisumu City. Amen? So I was able to go and visit them. I was there for about four days. They were happy. And I went all the way to Kakame. Kakame, that is where my grandma comes. So I'm a mixture of Luo and Luya. Nikona Damumbili Zote. Amen? So I was able to visit my grandma in Kakamega. We had a chit chat. I was able to talk to her. She, she loves stories. So we, we, we kept on telling stories, Paka Gioni, and I left. Now, Siku, siku wana ta fea ni mingi. Uko njoo kenda ulazimu kwe na taone. Ya kwena na kuru? Kurudi. So I was not going there because I have money. I was going there because I was operating in the kingdom of God. Where there is no inadequacy. Hakuna atisasa unakosa ama unastruggle. No. I went there. Nika wapelekea kitu kido. Kitu kido. Kujuu kenda kutembele wazazi wendangi mkono tupu. Sindio? Yeah, you go there so that people could make matter ya bara, ya baraka. And my grandma was happy, my mom was happy. We were able to talk. Tuliongea paka satana usi, usiku. We were just telling stories, just reflecting on the goodness of God. We had a gathering of of, of our family members. We are we, we are four boys. No, we are three boys and one girl. Amen. So tulika tu chini tunapiga tu story, tunapiga tu story. And all of them are grown-ups. I'm the first born in our family. Our last born, I got 25 years. So you can imagine, Niko na miyakangapi. Amen? <laughs> so, we were just able just to reflect on what God has been doing in our lives. And I can tell you for sure, what has kept me where I am today is believing in God's report. So I'm not sharing what I don't know. I'm sharing on what I know. Because I've seen God coming through for me in so many ways. I came in this town, I normally tell people, I like giving this testimony. I came with two trousers and four t-shirts. I've never forgotten that when I came to this city. I landed in this city, I was told, I was called for an interview, there was a job I was supposed to, to start. And I went for that interview and I passed, by God's grace, amen? And my cousin hosted me for three months. Actually, he's the one who invited me to this church, amen? Currently, I move and I should go side Yatasia. So he's there. I told my cousin, I want to wear Deliverance Churches because me, I joined Deliverance Church in 2003. He lingered Deliverance Church 2003. And I told him, Ni penye Deliverance Church, he could stuck anywhere else, and he brought me here. Amen? And that's why I, I've been here for that long, for about 10 years, by God's grace. Amen? Because God brought me in this place for a time as this. 
How could he let her to her for, for the sake of coming to this place? He wanted me to witness of what he has done in my life. Amen? So this morning, I want you to choose to believe in the report of God. You will hear about so many reports, but choose to believe God's report. Because in God's report, there are good things. In God's report, there are positive things. In God's report, there is future. In God's report, there is hope. And I normally say that Christ in me, the hope of glory. So it is him that gives us the hope. It doesn't matter what is happening in our country today. There are so many things that are happening that are not positive, but we choose to see things in God's perspective. I'm seeing God doing things that will overwhelm us. God is lifting us from grace to grace. So when you choose to believe in his report, where things are difficult, say things are good. When people are saying you are suffering, tell people you are blessed. When people are saying things are bad, tell people things are good. We are doing well. God is good. If God is good, things cannot be otherwise. Things must be good. So this morning, choose to see things in the perspective of God's eye. So I have a couple of points just to mention. So things, three things I want us to note. That the Lord will never take us where his grace will never sustain us. God did not bring us here to suffer. So his grace is here to sustain us for such a time as this. So there is no way God will leave us just like that. His, the, the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah 29 verse 11 that God has a good plan for us for us and expected future. So let us lay everything into his able hands because he is faithful and just. Amen? So let us depend on him because there is no way God has disappointed us. He will never disappoint us. They normally say that ukiona uko peke yako jiulize nani ametoka ni wewe ama ni Mungu. Ni wewe umetoka? Ni wewe umetoka. So God has never left us. So let us keep connected to him. Number two, for, for number one, we can read the book of 2 Corinthians 12, verse 1 to 10. Just to paraphrase 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 to 10, it talks about uh, Paul. It talks about Paul. And uh, there, was, there was some suffering that Paul went through in that chapter. And when we reach verse 10, and he was almost giving up. He was almost giving up. And God tells him that my grace is, suffi is sufficient. Let us just look at it. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Verse 11, I have become a fool in boasting. You have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended by you. For in nothing was I behind the most eminent apostles, though I am nothing. Truly the signs of an apostle were accomplished among you with all perseverance in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. Amen? So you realize that it is nothing, there is nothing that will sustain you where you are. It is only by his, gra his grace. Even salvation is not by works. Amen? The book of Ephesians talks about we have been saved by the grace of God. Through faith, through faith. So there is nothing we can say that this is our strength. So if you have been saved by the grace of God, then the same grace will be able to sustain you, even in these times we are living in. So let us depend on that grace. Let us depend and rely on that grace of God. The same grace that was able to bring us into salvation is the same grace that will be able to sustain us. Amen? Number two, his, strategy, his strategies and plans outweighs that of mankind. The strategies of God, the plans of God, it outweighs that of mankind. But it cannot surpass that, we, that of God. So God has a strategy. He has a plan. And his plan will always succeed in your life. So rely on that plan of God. Same Jeremiah that I quoted, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, it says, Media, you can kindly project for us. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. It says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and hope. 
God wants to give us two things, a future and hope. So we need to rely on that future because he's the one who holds the future. There's no one who holds the future but only God. So choose to rely on that. Amen? Amen. Don't rely on anything else. There are so many things people will tell you, but choose to rely on that plan that God has for us. The plan to give us a future and a hope. Number three, his word is unadulterated. You can take it, it yani, ijakua tainted. And you can take it to the bank. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. The word of God has never been contaminated. Nothing can contaminate his word. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. It says, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and, to, on, and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So God discerns the intents and the thoughts of our hearts. So there is no way God is not aware of what is happening in your life. There is no way that God is caught unawares. God has never been caught unawares. He is aware of everything that has happened. Even before it happened, he knew it, it would happen. Who knew that fuel will reach 200 bob? It used to play around one something. Now it is playing around 200. I heard some, someone say that it can even go up to 300. But we are not operating in that economy. We are operating in God's economy. Even if it reaches 300, bado tutapanda gari, bado watu wataendesha maga, magari. Umona watu wamesumamisha magari kweli, bado watu wanaendesha. Na hata ikifika hata miatano, still people will be driving because we are not operating in the economy of this world. Amen? I love what Psalms 24 says, that the earth is the Lord's and everything thereof. Psalms 24 verse 1. Everything on this earth belongs to God. So why should we complain? Umaeskia mtu amezikwa na gari ama pesa. Hiyo pesa utaacha hapa, hiyo gari utaacha hapa. Utazikwa na suti, maybe hiyo suti haina mgo, haina mgo. So don't, don't 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 try and live as if utaenda na hizi vitu. Use them. Kama ni watu wabariki nayo. Amen. Because all these things belongs to God. So there's no one is going to heaven with, with the cars we have, with the, with, with the money we have, with the wealth we have. We are living it on this earth. So use it for his glory, for his glory. Because we are living these things on this earth. Umai juliza, mtu akikufa mpesa haki nendango hapi. Iyo pesa inatumi? Itatumi katu? Itapata shu? Itapata shuguli. So don't operate like you, you are here forever. Live knowing that we are here temporarily. Paul says that, the board we have are like tents. They are here temporarily. We can be called home anytime. And God has been calling some of us in this house. So you don't need to live like you have forever in this life. You, are, you don't have forever. Live knowing that our focus is to see him. Amen? I love the book of Philippians chapter 3. It's one of my favorite scriptures. Philippians chapter 3. It talks about Paul saying, I am pressing on to the highest calling that I'm forgetting everything. I'm laying them aside. I'm counting them as nothing. For the sake of who? Of knowing God. So that is my challenge even to us. Forsake all. Because all these things that we have around us, they are vanity. Let us focus on him. The Bible said that we are looking into who? Looking into Christ. So our focus should be into him. Let us not focus on the things that are happening around us. When you focus on the things around you, you will lose hope. Like right now, when you focus on what is happening around this nation, you will lose hope. Focus on God. That is the report I want us to believe. That we will not focus on the things that are temporary. The Bible said that the things that we can see are temporary. But those things that we cannot see are eternal. So let us focus on eternity. That is the challenge I'm giving all of us this morning. That we are focusing on eternity. Because that is where we are heading. Amen? So that is the challenge I want to give us. As, as, we, as we head to conclusion, there are things I want us to take note of. Why should we believe the report of the Lord? Why should we believe? Why should we believe this report? Number one, he has been tried and tested. God has been tried and tested. So we need to believe this report. There is no one who was tried and tested like Christ. 
There is no one. There is no one who was tried and tested like Christ. In the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15, it says, For we do not have a high priest who was unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet did not do what? Sin. So if Christ was tried and tested, we can rely on his report. We can rely on his report. There is no other report we can rely on but the report of the Lord. Amen? Number two, his promises are sure. The promises of God are sure. You can bank it. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 says, For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ, and so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. So the promises of God are sure. Rely on his promises. Don't rely on the promises that Kenya Kwanza or the Azimio gave us. You realize some of those promises, ilikuwa tu ya kuingiza bo, kuingiza box, sindio? Now when you go to lingia bo, to lingia box, when you rely on those promises, you will lose hope. Rely on the promises of God. They are sure. Let me tell you, there is no sure promise like the promise of God. It is sure. Ia na semanga na natenda. Siyo anasiasa anasema hivi kesho wako mebadili. But God is faithful. You can bank on his word. Amen. Number three, he has proven, he has a proven track record. May I normally say there is no politician in this country that has a track record. They have lies. They have lies. All of them have lies. There's no one who has a track record. They always tell lies. Every day they tell lies. But the 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 record of Christ is unmatched. You cannot compare the record that Christ left. It is unmatched. Amen? So he, so he has proven track record. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19 says, God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? There is no word God spoke and did not fully fulfill it. Let me look at the last scripture, the book of Joshua, chapter 21. See how God is faithful to his word. Joshua 21, verse 45. Maybe media can project for us. Not a word failed of any good thing which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel. All came to pass. So you see what I mean by he has a track record? There is no word that God will speak and will not fulfill it. Human beings will say this thing, tomorrow they change their minds. But God will never say and fail to do it. So this morning I want to challenge us on those three points that I've mentioned. Choose to believe the report of God. Because his promises are what? They are sure. He has a proven track record. He has, his records cannot be compared to any other record. Amen? Amen? So I know many of us, we have reached a point where we feel like we want to give up. Don't give up. We are not giving up because Christ in us, the hope of glory. Amen? So even as we, we conclude, I want, us, I want to bring this home by saying that God has never changed. The Bible says that is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? So the same way he was during the times of children of Israel is the same way he is today. Amen? If he did it yesterday, he can do it. He can do it today. And he will do it even tomorrow. Amen? So don't focus on what has been happening in your life around you. Focus on what God is doing. Amen? They, they normally say that when the devil tells you about your past, you need to tell him about his, few, about his future. Because there is ways where his cond condemnation and also domination lies. Amen? So I want us to, to, to choose to take God at his word. Brethren, I know it cannot be easy for us. We can say that things on the ground are different, but things on the kingdom of God are different as well. So let us rely on the things that are happening in the kingdom, not on this earth. Amen? So let us choose not to believe on what people tell us. Let us choose not to believe on what is happening around us. Let us choose to believe 
on what God is do, is doing. Because God has been working even before we came on this earth. Even before we were born, the Bible said that while we were still in our mother's womb, God knew us. So hakuna vile ulikuja hapa kibahati, ulikuja hapa kwa ajali, you came here by accident. No one came by accident. It was the plan of God. So when you are under the plan of God, his plan will be manifested in your life. There is no other plan that will be able to take residence in your life, but only the plan of God. Amen? So God is a just and a faithful God. Our God has never failed us, and he will never fail us. Human beings will fail us. Human beings will let us down, but God will never let us down. Amen? Because he's a God who is faithful. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 13, talks about God's faithfulness. It says, if we are faithless, he remains to be faithful. He cannot deny himself. God has never denied himself. He's a faithful God. So let us rely on his faithfulness, knowing that he who was promised is faith, is faithful. Amen? So I want us just to reflect on this word this morning and just to remind us that the God we serve, he has been tried and tested. We can, re- we can believe on his report. That his promises are sure. We can, we can rely on these promises. That he has a proven track record. We can rely on the things that he has done before. Amen? And he will still do them even now. So in conclusion, I want to say this. If God said it, we believe it and he will do it. If God said it, we believe it and he will do it. That is who our God is. So that is the word that he had laid in my heart that even as we are believing in this service, we are living knowing that God said it, I believe it, and he will do it. I just want us to reflect even as we want to pray concerning this message of our this morning. Just reflect and just reflect what God has been doing in your life and what you want God to do in your life even in this current situation we are in. Father God, we bless you this morning. We thank you because you are a faithful, you are a just God. You are not a man that you lie. That our Father, whatever is happening around us, whatever that has been happening around us, you are aware of our Father. You are a faithful God. You are a just God. And Lord, you'll never fail us. You have never failed us and you'll never fail us. Father, this morning we are choosing to believe your report. That Lord, you are not operating in the economy of this country. We are operating in the economy of God. That our Father, we have seen you demonstrating your faithfulness of our lives. We have seen your mighty hand upon our lives. We have seen you, Abba Father, giving us victory after victory. And this morning we are choosing to believe the report of our God. And this morning we pray that you may be lifted in our lives, be exalted in this place, be magnified, O oh God. We choose, Abba Father, not to believe the report of the devil, which are lies, but we choose to believe in the report of God. Father, we bless you and we honor you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brakia Sana.